Last week, I looked at a channel called Talking to Leeds Cullinan, uh, who was trying to tell us how the Earth really orbits the Sun. Now, I did miss something from that video, so we'll be addressing that, as well as looking at his response, and he is not a happy bunny. <laughs> And welcome along to another episode of Tin Ford Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, HelloFresh. Are you looking for an easy way to eat well and save money this year? Well, cut back on expensive takeout and deliveries and get started with HelloFresh. You will love how fast, easy and affordable it is to whip up a restaurant quality meal right in your own kitchen. HelloFresh helps you save money all year round. In fact, HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeout. And of course, eating well is on the top of people's minds this month especially. And it's comforting to know you always get top quality with HelloFresh. Ingredients travel from the farm to you in less than seven days, so you know it's fresh. Here's my newest box, and I cooked the Thai-style pork rice bowl. The instructions are incredibly easy to follow, and the ingredients really are fresh. You definitely feel like you're getting the best quality ingredients with HelloFresh. Now I'm the cook in the house and having HelloFresh not only saves me money, but time as well. Time arranging what meals to have and the lengthy process of getting all of the ingredients. With HelloFresh, it all comes to you. I won't be going back to the old ways at all. Use my link in the description or go to hellofresh.com and use my code POGDANJAN21 to get 21 free meals and shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Right, back to today's video, which as I said at the start is regarding a response from talking to Leeds Kalnin about a video I made on him last week. Complicated, I know, but stick with me. So last week, I started to take a look at this video from him. And in that video, I stated this. If indeed the wires are centered dead on true north, then Polaris would circumnavigate that central point over 24 hours. It would not be in one quadrant per season. Even if it was slightly off true north, it still wouldn't be in one quadrant per season. Now, without going there myself, I can't 100% verify this, but I suspect that is what's going on. Now, of course, that's entirely true, but I did miss something. And we're gonna address that thought first before we take a look at his response. So, the Polaris telescope will show Polaris uh, making a small circle around true north, celestial north, over the course of 24 hours. However, it will show up in different quadrants at different times of year if you look at Polaris exactly the same time each night and track it over the course of that year. Now, in my defense, talking to Leeds Cullinan was very ambiguous about this. He never said anything about marking its position at the same time each night. He just said this. And uh, the reason it's called the Polaris Telescope is because uh, any clear night of the year, you can look through this uh, the, the crosshairs that he has made and you can see uh, Polaris and one of the four quadrants, right? And with this, we know we can mark the seasons. See, he has them marked off in quarters. But to show you what I'm talking about, I've made a short explanation. Have a look at this. Okay, so here we go. This is what Leeds Conan was talking about. Uh, yes, he is correct, and I'm gonna show you why. Uh, this is Stellarium, by the way, uh, a free software, piece of software. Um, so we can see here that we have the uh, celestial true north point here, uh, and we have Polaris here. Now I've set up the, the, the position of the viewer as Coral Castle, so the exact coordinates here are Coral Castle in Florida. And I'll set the date to the 21st of March uh, last year, 2021, which is the spring equinox. And the time that we're gonna take this is 10 o'clock, so 10 o'clock on the, on the uh, each different day. So we can see here the spring equinox, Polaris is in what would be the bottom left quadrant. If we had the crosshairs here, it'd be in the bottom left quadrant. Now if we move forward to the summer solstice, we'll see that it's in the bottom right quadrant at 10 o'clock. The autumn equinox, it would be in the top right quadrant. And the winter solstice, it would be in the top left quadrant. So that's what he's talking about. He is correct uh, on, on that one. So he was right about this. However, there are two things I want to say. First off, the reason for this is not what he thinks. 
It is not because of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. It's because of the difference between the solar and sidereal days. The solar day is the time it takes for the Earth to rotate about its axis so that the Sun appears in the same position in the sky. That, we all know, is 24 hours. The sidereal day, however, is the time it takes for a certain star to reach the same position in the sky and is shorter than the solar day at 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds. Now that means each day Polaris would have moved slightly from the position it was in the day before. Uh, about a degree, actually. And that's because we've had to rotate that tiny little bit extra uh, during the day. So that still means it's not caused by Earth's orbit alone. It's caused by the Earth's rotation and its orbit. Now that means it still wouldn't trace out an ellipse like talking to Leeds Cowland is saying. Secondly, even though he was sort of right about this, it still doesn't mean that the Earth orbits the Sun in the way he thinks it does. Okay, let's get on with his response. Hi guys, RL Pool. Back with a rebuttal to Simon Dan's Tinfoil Tuesday debunking video of my work. Um, so I just want to say right off the bat, I have gotten so trolled, oh, it's so great, uh, all that stuff. However, we have a problem because what's going on is that Simon Dan gave you a very wrong and bad piece of information that made you think that. Which I have just addressed. And by the way, I wasn't wrong. My explanation uh, as to what Polaris does over 24 hours was correct. I just missed something out, which I have now confirmed. You know, I, I was getting mad because everybody kept saying this stuff to me. That's not true, and I'm going to cover it. But then I realized, oh, that well, Simon Dan told them that, and he's wrong. Like, that's not me saying it. It's astronomy. And I'll prove it to you, okay? But this is his whole argument against me, and it's wrong. It certainly wasn't my whole argument against you. It was just a small portion of the video. So I'm going to address that. But I want to address a few other things that he pointed out in the video. I don't feel like doing the clip thing back and forth. I, I don't care about that. And nobody really needs to see him. Bit harsh. Um, he said that, uh, that the Earth is closer in winter solstice. Um, that, that's true. Um, I know that I said that differently in the video, but if you look directly beneath the video, I already caught and corrected that mistake and, and said, hey, no, that is right. Well, having done that yourself, hopefully you'll accept my correction as well. Um, and I corroborated it using the thing that he won't address, which is the sundial, which was absent from the video, I noticed, that I gave an entire lecture on how the Polaris telescope and the sundial are paramount to understanding how the Earth goes around the sun, he wants to debunk my video on how the Earth goes around the sun and then doesn't take on any of the arguments. Well, if you'd have watched my video, you would have seen me say this. Now look, there's over 35 minutes more of this lecture, and if you want me to take another look at the next section, let me know in the comments and I will do that. So that was a little unfair to say that I won't address it. I've just not got round to it yet, but don't worry, I will. Um, he says that my model would cause havoc with day and night cycles, but he doesn't explain how it would. He just says that it would. And this is what I've come to notice about Simon Dan, which is why I picked him out in particular. I want you guys to understand something. This whole trolling him thing and all that stuff, it's not me being mean, okay? I'm not being mean. I'm saying that guy over there is doing bad science. He's doing bad things in the name of science, and he wants to fool you into thinking he knows what he's talking about. But he doesn't, and I'm going to prove it to you. That is an absolutely fair opinion. But, I warn you, I am going to explain that in a minute, and it's not good for your model. He says, uh, so for instance, like, my model will cause a problem with day and night. Okay, well, what's funny is, is that our equinoxes are the same, and during Ed's equinox, there's equal day and equal night. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Our models match, they line up, they agree. Literally, for two moments in a year. We agree that the Earth is at a 23 degree angle in space relative to the equator of the Sun. 
Um, no, we don't agree on that. Not at all. We all agree on those things. But what we don't agree about is the angle of its orbit. Um, the angle of its orbit and... The Earth is at a 23 degree angle in space relative to the equator of the Sun. Sounds like the same thing to me. What you should have said is that we agree that the Earth has an axial tilt of 23.4 degrees. Which we do agree on. They say it's straight and Ed says it's like this. That's all really the matter is. And that's the part that he did not and refused to take on. Let's take it on now then, shall we? Here we go. Okay, so here we are. This is a wonderful piece of software called Universe Sandbox. Um, and I've selected Earth here. And you can see this is how the solar system actually is. And you can see here that the planets are on pretty much the same orbital plane as the Sun. There is Pluto there. I don't know if you can notice it. You can see the orbit of Pluto does have that 17 degree inclination to the normal plane of the solar system. So um, the reason that we get our long days and, and uh, short days, long days in the summer and short days in the winter is because of our axial tilt of 23.4 degrees. And that's this little bit here. The obliquity is 23.4 degrees. And the inclination is the, uh, the degrees off of that exact orbital plane, which you can see for Earth is about 0 0.0025 degrees. Now, I've got it at the moment set on 20th of June, and you can see on the 20th of June that the North Pole is tilted towards the Sun. You can see that. Now, if I play the animation and I make it go faster, you'll see as time goes on, the North Pole will start to creep closer to that terminator you can see here and when we get to the winter solstice which as we know is around the 21st of December I will pause it again so November December and there we go that's about there you go the 22nd now you can see that the North Pole is now in the darkness, it's tilted away from the Sun and you can see here that Antarctica and the South Pole is tilted towards the Sun. So that's what the axial tilt does for our climate, for our seasons and for our day length. Okay now so if we then uh, zoom into Earth and we change, so the great thing about Universe Sandbox is that we can change things about its orbit. So what we can do is we can take, so I've set it to the 21st of December, so we're on the winter solstice. So we can see that the uh, southern pole is tilted towards the sun. Now what we can do is we can change the uh, inclination of Earth's orbit to 23.4 degrees, which is what Leeds Callan is suggesting. So there we go. So now we can see, if we pull out from here, we can see that that's adjusted the orbit, there we go, it's notched it down and it should have like a, a predicted orbit, it's not on there, but so you can see now that Earth is off from that cent central plane by 23.5 degrees. Now what we do is we will check our, quickly check our, um, our obliquity. So the obliquity here is uh, the angle between rotation axis and orbital plane. So we're going to change that to zero because the difference, because it's at 23.5 degree rotational uh, orbital plane, the obliquity on here becomes zero because that means the axis is 23.5 degrees, if that makes sense. Uh, so now we can see that it's got a tilt towards the sun, uh, 23.5 degrees, with an orbital plane of 23.5 degrees. Now what happens when we go throughout the year, you'll notice that the North Pole stays bang in the middle all through the year. All through the year as, as the Earth goes around the Sun. You can see it's going around the Sun because this shadow is moving and if we go around to the South Pole it's exactly the same thing. The South Pole is 
uh, staying bang on that terminator. So if this was the case with a 23.5 degree inclination in orbit, with the axial tilt the same, there would be equal day and equal night all year round. We don't see that, it does not happen. And there we go. I would suggest that that is a knockout blow for your model. This is what I meant when I said it would cause havoc with our day and night schedule, if you will. We do not experience equal day and equal night across the whole globe all year round. And other people disagree is on the angle at which we orbit. They think we go straight around and he says we go at an angle. And Simon Dan, he really nails this. I mean, he, he says, hey, that's completely wrong. And then offers absolutely no explanation, no evidence. Does not pick apart my argument. You know why? Because my argument's right. My argument's really hard to argue with. It really wasn't. I've just showed you how it doesn't work. Because we're not talking about me. I'm not smart enough to figure this out on my own. Somebody else figured it out and I found it and I'm explaining it to you. He built these instruments that are megalithic. And by the way, that's my other thing, my other little bone to pick with Simon Dan. He says, well, you know, forget all the cutting te edge technology we have. Let's do it with some rocks. Yes, and then I immediately said this. Which, don't get me wrong, back then is a great achievement, but still. My point was, it's the 21st century, and we use the tools at our disposal right now to get things right. Well, all I know is, is that where's the evidence that this technology provides? Just show me the evidence that this technology provides. Because unless you do, I'm going with the rocks. You know why? Because the rocks are accurate. Sure. Okay. Well, this is an image of uh, Earth and Saturn taken by Cassini. It shows two things really. First, the nature of how materials form around larger masses. Saturn's rings are an excellent model to show how the solar system forms from an accretion disk orbiting a newly formed star. Because of the manner of the way this accretion disk forms, most planets form in the same place. Unless you want to suggest that Earth did not form at the same time as the other planets and it was captured by the Sun's gravity. Additionally, this image of the Earth would not be possible if it wasn't in the same orbital plane as Saturn. Unless you want to suggest that Saturn is travelling in the same orbital plane as we are. But the problem with that is we then wouldn't see Saturn travelling across the ecliptic. And they're accessible. <laughs> I, I, I can't access a satellite, can you? you you're just going to be like, oh, that's what they say. That's not science. Science is being able to prove it to yourself, and that's what Ed did. You could prove it to yourself. That's the value of rocks. And this is all well and good. I'm just saying that he's mistaken about Earth's orbit. That is all. Ask our megalithic ancestors the value of rocks. So that kind of mocking statement, trying to like, you know, shovel dirt on Ed's miserable corpse, as it were. See, this is where it's like, it's personal. It's not science, you know? And I don't appreciate that because megalithic instruments can be accurate and his are accurate. You know what? You're absolutely right. I apologize. Obviously, or else he wouldn't have gotten the correct answers. The ones that Simon and Dan is running from right now, you know? Um, he refuses to admit that the Polaris telescope is a sextant. He didn't even bring that up. You're so interested in astronomy. I thought this was your, this was your specialty, right? Well, if it is a sextant, it's not a very useful one. It can only make one reading, and that's the angle of Polaris to the horizon at the exact location you're in. And you didn't even realize that the Polaris telescope is a sextant. Now, I'll forgive you, because you haven't been to the Coral Castle, that you don't know that there's a way that you line that up. You have to look through another eyepiece with another uh, piece of wire and line the, all those up, and then you can see Polaris. Yes, I did know that, but it still only records one thing, doesn't it? Polaris. And I doubt it can even record the angle, but again, if it does, I apologize. Um, but now this is where we get, I don't need this, this is where we get to the part where he has committed a, he's committed a science crime, guys. Him and uh, what's his dude's name? Conspiracy Cats. Remember when I told you he postponed it a week because he didn't have any answers? 
And then when he posted, oh, it's coming, I said, did you have to phone a friend? Okay, so talking to Leeds Callan now takes up the rest of his 12 minutes scathing me about my omission regarding the Polaris telescope, which I addressed earlier. So I think we'll wrap that up for today and we'll have a look at his sundial proof next time. Well, there we go. I hope that clears a lot of things up. Thank you so much for watching, but we are all done and dusted for another Tin Four Tuesday. If you enjoyed it today, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We are definitely on that march for half a million subscribers now. It would be thoroughly appreciated. And of course, if you really, really enjoyed it, hit that like button as well. Just enough time to once again thank HelloFresh for sponsoring today. Remember, use my link in the description or go to hellofresh.com and use the code POGDANJAN21 to get 21 free meals and shipping. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week and I'll see you on Friday for apparently a real flat earth map. See you then.